Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The infinite series, sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial, converges for all real numbers x greater than or equal to 0. Now, we could prove that this infinite series converges using the ratio test, but we're going to take a different approach. Now, really, we're going to show that this sequence of partial sums converts, because that's what it means for this infinite series to converge. And to show that this sequence converges, what we're going to do is we're going to show that this sequence is increasing and that our sequence is bounded above. Because if we can show that, then by the monotone convergence theorem, that tells us that this sequence converges. Now, let's first show that this sequence is increasing. And to show that the sequence is increasing, what that means is we want to show that every term of the sequence is less than or equal to the term that comes after it. So let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer n. And from here, we want to show that the nth term of this sequence is less than or equal to the n plus 1th term of this sequence. Or in other words, the n plus 1th term of this sequence is greater than or equal to the nth term of this sequence. So let's write out the n plus 1th term of this sequence. It's just this. But we can pull away the n plus 1th term of this sum. So really, we have the sum from k equals 0 to n of x to the k over k factorial plus x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now, really, this term is greater than or equal to 0. The reason why is, well, since x is greater than or equal to 0, we know if we raise x to the power of any positive integer, x to the power of that positive integer will also be greater than or equal to 0. So in particular, x to the power of n plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Divide that by a positive number, the result is still greater than or equal to 0. So really, since this guy is greater than or equal to 0, this entire thing must be greater than or equal to this guy. But this is precisely the nth term of the sequence. So we've shown that the n plus 1th term of the sequence is greater than or equal to the nth term of the sequence. Right, and this tells us that the sequence is increasing. So now, let's show that our sequence is bounded above. Now, what does it mean for our sequence to be bounded above? It means that every term of our sequence is less than or equal to some fixed number. So that's what we're going to show. Now, here's how we're going to do it. Let's first define the quantity m. We're going to define m to be the floor of x plus 1. Now, the floor of x is defined as the greatest integer less than or equal to x. And a property that the floor satisfies is the following. The floor of x is less than or equal to x, which is strictly less than the floor of x plus 1. So. Since the floor of x plus 1 is equal to m, we have that x is less than m. And so what we're going to do is we're going to show that every term of this sequence beyond the nth term is less than or equal to a fixed number. If we can show that, well then it follows that every term of this sequence is less than or equal to that same fixed number, because the sequence is increasing. So, let's consider an arbitrary positive integer n, such that n is bigger than m. From here, we're going to show that the nth term of the sequence is less than or equal to a fixed number. Now, notice, if we write out the nth term of this sequence, we get... this. But then, since m lies between 0 and n, we can split this sum up into two sums as follows. So 
So we split the sum up into two sums, where we've gone from k equals 0 to n, but instead we split it up into k equals 0 to m minus 1, and then k equals m to n. Right? We can do that. Now remember, the whole goal is to make this guy less than or equal to a fixed number. Now, we don't have to worry about this term, because this term is already fixed. The reason why is because m is just an expression in terms of x. Therefore, this entire sum is just an expression in terms of x. So, this term is fixed. So then all we have to worry about is this term. This term isn't fixed because n is still there. So, let's try to bound this term above by some fixed number. So we'll move back up to the top. Okay, so then what can we do to make this guy less than or equal to a fixed number? The trick we're going to use is to introduce a geometric series. And so to start out, it makes sense to expect that in this sum, we can factor out x to the m over m factorial. And to see how we can arrive at that, well, notice if we consider an arbitrary term of this sum, that is, we consider an arbitrary integer k between m and n, then k is greater than or equal to m. So if we try to re-express k factorial in terms of m factorial, well, here's what it would look like. It would look something like this, right? To go from m factorial to k factorial, well, since m is less than or equal to k, all we would have to do is multiply m plus 1, then m plus 2, then m plus 3, and so on and so forth until we reach k. In product notation, this is really the same thing as this, right? m factorial times the product from i equals m plus 1 to k of i. Now, we can agree that this makes sense if k is strictly bigger than m, because in that case, we're actually going to have terms in this product. Otherwise, what happens if k equals m? Well then, the left-hand side is just m factorial. The right-hand side is m factorial times the product from i equals m plus 1 to m of i. So in this case, the lower number is strictly bigger than the upper number. Well, if that happens, then this is just an empty product. And by definition, an empty product is just equal to 1. So we have m factorial times 1, which is equal to m factorial. So both the left-hand side and right-hand side are still equal to each other. So no matter what integer k is between m and n, we can always re-express k factorial as this. In fact, we can also re-express x to the k as this. So really, we're just going to re-express x to the k here as this, and k factorial here as this. And now notice, we see x to the m over m factorial, and x to the m over m factorial does not depend on the index k. So property of summations tells us we can pull x to the m over m factorial to the outside of the sum. So now what do we do from here? Well, we want to somehow give the impression of a geometric series. Well, notice if we consider again an arbitrary term of this sum, that is we consider an arbitrary integer k between m and n, then, as you can imagine, we expect the product from i equals m plus 1 to k of i to be greater than or equal to the product from i equals m plus 1 to k of m. Essentially, what's going on here is if k is strictly bigger than m, then we're actually going to have terms in these products. As you can imagine, every term in this product 
is strictly bigger than m. So, of course, a product of a bunch of numbers, which are all strictly bigger than m, must be bigger than the product of the same number of m's. Right? So, this inequality makes sense in the case where k is strictly bigger than m. Otherwise, k is equal to m, in which case, these are both empty products, so they're both equal to 1. So, this is true no matter what k is. So, we know that this is true, but what's this? Well, this is the product of a bunch of m's. How many m's? Well, the number of integers between m plus 1 and k. And how many integers are between m plus 1 and k? Well, if we figure that out, it's really just the difference between m plus 1 and k plus 1. And that's just equal to k minus m. Therefore, this product is just m to the power of k minus m. So, this must be greater than or equal to this. We take the reciprocal of both sides, it follows that. We have this, but then if we multiply the non-negative number x to the power of k minus m on both sides, we get this. So really, what we've shown here is, given any integer k between m and n, this is true. In other words, given any term in this sum, well, this term is less than or equal to this corresponding value. And therefore, the sum of all of these guys must be less than or equal to the sum of all of these guys. And then we can re-express this as x over m to the power of k minus m. And because we've ran out of room, let's move back to the top again. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to shift the index of our sum. Right? We're going to decrease both the lower number and upper number by m. So we get sum from k equals m to n minus m. Right? And we can do that. All we got to remember is we have to replace everywhere we see a k with k plus n. So really, k is going to be replaced with k plus n. And that just results in x over m to the power of k. So we're left with this. And now we have a geometric series. If we recall, the formula for a geometric series is as follows. If we're given a real number r not equal to 1 and a positive integer capital M, then this is the formula for a geometric series, right? And let's recall from earlier, x is less than m, right? That's how m was defined. And because of that, we know that if we divide m to the other side, we get x over m is less than 1. And certainly, x over m is greater than or equal to 0. So yeah, x over m is not equal to 1. So we can take r to be x over m, we'll take capital N to be n minus m. If we do that, then this sum is just equal to So this looks a little messy, but we can actually just say that 1 minus this guy is less than or equal to 1. The reason why is because of the following. Since x over m lies between 0 and 1, we know if we multiply x over m by itself over and over again, the result will still be between 0 and 1. So in particular, x over m to the power of n minus m plus 1 must also lie between 0 and 1. From here, it follows that 1 minus this also lies between 0 and 1. So now, we see that this guy is less than or equal to 1. Therefore, this entire thing must be less than or equal to the same thing where we replace the numerator here 
with one. And this is a fixed number because it's completely in terms of x and m, and we know that m was defined as a quantity in terms of x. So this entire expression is in terms of x. It's a fixed number. So now let's go back to what we had before. We originally re-expressed the sum from k equals 0 to n into two sums. And we've just shown that this guy is less than or equal to this guy. Therefore, this guy must be less than or equal to this guy plus this guy. So, the nth term of our sequence of partial sums is less than or equal to this fixed number. And, from what we said earlier, this shows that our sequence of partial sums is bounded above. And therefore, by the monotone convergence theorem, that tells us that our sequence of partial sums converges. And that is another way of saying that this infinite series converges. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.